Hello, everyone. Welcome to Black Link Magazine. My name is Marva B. I am the CEO and founder, and I'm so excited that this is our first interview for 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope that you, I wish everyone the best for this year, better than last year, um, and that everything you desire, you get. So we'd like to welcome our guest, Mr. David Stevenson. Mr. Stevenson, thank you for being here. Welcome. Oh, it's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure. Yeah. So we tried to get this interview done before you guys, but we're finally here. So we're excited about it. David, would you go ahead and tell the world who just a little bit about who you are and what you do? And then we'll just jump right into the interview. Okay. Well, I've uh, been in the movie business for about 30 years. Um, I've studied at the Royal Conservatory of Music also. And I spent my time in the beginning stages dancing with Alvin Haley, Phil Blacks in New York. So I've been in the business for a very long time in the entertainment world. And at this moment, um, I've written a script called Dangerous Days, The Journey. Yeah. We are, we are about to launch that. The book is already done. So we're, uh, we're raising the finances in order to uh, establish uh, this great, great film. And I also wrote three tunes towards the film. We have Call My Name, Lockdown, and the one that's trending right now is called Gratitude. Gratitude. So those three, those are the three um, music that is going into the film itself. Awesome. So it's 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 been an exciting journey, <laughs> but we're here. Sounds like it. You know, this entertainment yeah. business is exciting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, to say the least. So um, it, it keeps you on your toes and sounds like that you've had a good run in the business. So um, David is a director, producer, actor. Um, he does stunts, performer, creator, all of those <laughs> things. And um, had had been blessed to be uh, a part of X-Men, uh, Down to Earth, the Blues Brothers 2000 and Cool Running. Let's talk about, first of all, as you were growing up, did you did you know or did you realize that you were going to be in this business? Um, I had a sense that I was. I come from a family of entertainers. My mother was a singer and my dad is a composer. Mm -hmm. So when I was coming up, uh, all I heard in my head was music and films. And so I didn't know it would come to this extent. I didn't know I was going to be where I'm at now. But uh, through the years, um, having an opportunity to go to different schools and study and also travel and tour. And uh, I'm a fifth degree martial artist in, in three different styles, Honga, Shaolin, Hot, and Wushu. So that gave me an opportunity to get behind the camera instead of being in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I, felt, I felt in my early days of um, acting, um, I felt it, the audition thing didn't feel right to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to um, to go behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And behind the scenes, the behind the scenes to me was more beneficial mm -hmm. because I got, I got a chance to um, coordinate as a stunt coordinator. And um, in the process of doing that, I got an opportunity to learn everything about the industry and learn about the camera. So I started... I started coordinating first and then I started directing second unit. Then when I was shooting in Hong Kong with, with uh, Jet Li and, and mm -hmm. those guys, when I came back from Hong Kong, actually I didn't come back from Hong Kong. They asked me to come back to uh, work with an Olympic skater named Elvis Stoiko. Mm -hmm. And uh, they needed somebody to take him to, to a higher level. And he was interested in martial arts. So what I did was they flew me back to L.A., and I had a chance to meet with him and he wanted to do a routine on ice, but he wanted he wanted to do a martial arts routine on ice. So I spent time chore chore choreographing him and teaching him the uh, uh, martial arts, which I am the first man in the world to take a martial arts routine and put it on ice. He won uh, gold in Canada. And silver, and I think gold, uh, silver or uh, bronze in Lilyhammer. Wow. So, um, yeah. So, with them 
given me that opportunity to come back, I, I had an opportunity to do things that I never expected. <laughs> right, because, you know, choreographing for someone to do martial arts on ice, first of all, the ice by itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How difficult mm -hmm. or not was that? Like, how did you, how did you, um, tell me your process. Tell me your process, because I can't imagine. Um, well, the process was I learned how to skate at an early age. Uh, so uh, with the with the martial arts that I do, the Hongan, Shaolin Fat, and Wushu, it teaches you all sense of balance and also mental stability, meaning that in every situation you have to react. So when I got with him, he was doing the natural spins and all that stuff. And I took it, broke him down and taught him the different styles. So I used a bit of tiger, uh -huh. a bit of crane, a bit of crane, and I, and I also use a bit of eagle style. So when you see his when you see his routine, it's incorporated with three different styles of uh, kung fu martial arts. Yeah. Um, but uh, it wasn't as difficult for me. But you know, it, I had an opportunity to turn his mind into understanding gracefulness and understanding that all things are possible if you believe. So it was more, it, I had more time to work with his mental capacity, his mind, and show him that uh, the routines that I'm doing and I'm teaching him, he can use this for his life. It can follow through his life if he continues doing the martial arts. Mm -hmm. So um, in that behalf, uh, it wasn't that much difficult because I was, you know, I've been teaching for many years. So it was easy to, for me to grab somebody and just yeah. you know try to mold them into the teaching that I that I do on a movie set or the choreography on a movie set you know yeah. stuff like that so mm -hmm. for, for the for him learning to do those things that you were teaching him like was it a drawn up out process I know that he was really obviously dedicated to learning it and doing it but mm -hmm. learning something new like that on ice was it was it difficult for him to catch on um was it drawn it out or, or did he catch on pretty quick no he caught on pretty good because he was interested in martial arts from before okay but uh the style of martial arts that he did was hard it was karate style and i do kung fu which okay. is more flowing uh self-defense i mean in the sense that uh uh being able to push and pull Right. Use the energy, use the energy of someone else instead okay. of using your your own energy. So um, it was easy for me to choreograph him because it had my style has a bit of dance movement in it. So it flows right. more than a hard pushing type of style right. of martial arts. So with him on the ice spinning and turning, it was easy for me to catch him at one specific move where he can stop and show the profile of the style. Mm -hmm. and with with the spins he got an opportunity to use his hands in certain ways and his legs in certain ways of <laughs> that every, any martial arts who will look any martial person who's into martial arts will know that style and they would know that's a martial arts style so yeah. it was it was more of a um almost almost like uh directing but almost like writing a script because mm -hmm. I had to take out specific parts of a martial arts and place it on him, right. that he'd be able to that he'd be able to use and ex and express that in in a in a maybe in a big format or more like um, a flowing um, yin a yin and the yan type of style. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> How did you when you look back over your career? What was the first thing? that happened that you were like, ah, okay, I'm in, like I'm I'm actually doing this. So that led up to the movies, X-Men and uh, the Blues Brothers and those types of movies. Like, like what was okay. the Okay, um, uh, how it started, I got to, I got kind of got discovered when I was like 17, 18. I was dancing on a television show in Toronto called Boogie. It was like um, Soul Train <laughs> back then. <laughs> All right. So, an agent saw me there and uh, she decided to come and talk to me about being on her agency. Mm -hmm. her, her name is Catherine McCartney. Like she was, she managed people like Leonard Nimoy, 
um, uh, like some of the top actors. Right. At, at that time, I was young. I was very young. So yeah. she had, uh, and the funny thing is, uh, uh, John Candy was in her crew. So oh, wow. when I did, cool, it's so funny. When I did Cool Runnings, he already knew me. Oh, wow. And he, and he was like, he was like, Dave, what are you doing? What are you doing behind the camera? You should be in front of the camera. So, so, so I got I got discovered at an early age, and she started implementing me into commercials. Okay. So I, was, I started doing commercials, but I also I was on tour with a band called the Soul Express, mm -hmm. and we were we were touring basically all over the world. You know, it's back then it was more like a like a Michael Jackson. You know, um, more a lot yeah. of or choreographed stuff up yeah. front, you know, yeah. like, so like the spinners, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, um, um, on being underneath her, she, she actually instilled a lot of things in us. She made us go to, uh, to the conservatory to learn how to sing. She learned, she sent us to learn how to dance, even though we didn't know ballet, we had to take it anyhow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and we had to learn how to tap. We had to do all these things that, you know, a kid from the street really, you know, we, right. we're more into more funk and, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> not ballet. But we had, yes, not that style. But and I see in the purpose, it really worked because yeah. it kind of helped us with form mm -hmm. and being able to execute some of the roughness that we had right. at that time. So, so I got into the business through the agent. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into that business. Okay. And so, mm -hmm. and so basically, your agent was connecting you. What did you do directly with X Men? Um, I I was um actually one of the stunt performers. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you look in the first, I think it's either the first sequence. Uh, I'm on the train, and he breaks through the train, yeah. and I'm sitting. I'm sitting in one of the seats, but uh -huh. we react. And, uh, you know, we do all this falling and flipping and stuff, you know. So I, it was fun. It was fun being on the set because I got a chance to meet a lot of great people. Yeah. And that's yeah. the one thing about being on a movie set. You meet yeah. great people who 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 been around for a long time. So they give you a little bit of the wisdom if you're smart enough to take it. That's right. So it depends on yeah. what you do with it. That's right. Mm -hmm. I really love mm -hmm. Blues Brothers. Like, what did you do in Blues Brothers? And then we'll move Oh, on. my goodness. I um, love that. Um, I uh, Blues Brothers, they called me in because they could not find any stuntman to be able to walk an alligator. So um, I got called and every all the other stuntmen that I knew, they said, no way, we're not walking an alligator. <laughs> me <neither. laughs> and I said to myself, hmm, I've done so many things, jumping out of uh, uh, planes, jumping out of cars. Well, this alligator thing should be easy. So when I got on set, they showed me the female alligator and the male alligator. And um, I said to myself, you got to pick one. And which one do you think would be the best one for you? Right. So I end up picking the female. And um, when I got on the set and they, uh, they, they basically said, it's time for Dave to get on set and do action. I was so amazed because one thing I realized about animals is they feel you. Mm hmm they feel if your negativity mm -hmm. or your positivity. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to kind of feel that animal. They had his face all taped up, but yeah. I had to stand beside him with a chain. When you see the movie, you'll see me walking it. I'm the only one that walked it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so at the time of action, they released the tape from the mouth. And I had to like pull the chain but I decided the only way to do this is to stand in the middle of the alligator because I did my research. If you stand close to the mouth, he's going to bite you. If you stand at the back of the tail, he's going to break your legs. So right. the best thing to do is stand right in the middle of him, which makes him more difficult to get to you. Right. And you have to be quick enough to be able to remove yourself if he comes with his head or if he comes with his tail. But by the time I pulled it up, he got up and he says, OK, we're walking now. He walked in a full circle, came back to the same spot. He, I sat him down. He went back down, and it was cut on my first take. I was going to say, how many takes did it did it take? <laughs> one take. One take. It was one take. <laughs> I don't know if I could have did that. 
<laughs> so oh, thanks to you God. for doing that. <laughs> I was I was so thankful. I was like, thanks, thank that I came to the I uh, came to the trailer yeah. with a positive with a positive vibration. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he cooperated at that time. Yeah, he did. Um, Definitely yes. did. Definitely so, did. So you have a book out. Um, let's talk about your book and let's talk about um, Dangerous Days about how you came up with the title. Tell us a little bit about the book because we're now you're now turning it into a movie, right? Yes. 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 So let's start with the book and what it what it talks about and why the topic, why the title. Okay. Um, when I was in the Hong Kong, I started writing this. I was with uh I was with Bolo Young. Do you know Bolo Young? He was in a movie with um uh, Bruce Lee, Enter okay. the Dragon. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so Bolo invited me to Hong Kong because I'm a good friend with, I was a good friend with Brandon Lee before he passed. Aww. So, and Bolo was a good friend with Brandon um, because he worked with Bruce. Uh -huh. And so they invited me, a good friend of mine named um, Wayne Yee, he invited me, another martial artist, they're all martial artists. So they invited me to come to Hong Kong for Miss, Mr. Asia. Uh -huh. Muscle Man right. Asia. Uh -huh. And and um while I was there, I met Flex Wallace, who was um the biggest muscle champion in America. Right. And I met Miss, Mr. Mexico and everybody was there. And while I was there and staying at a hotel and spending some time there, I came up with the idea, uh, Dangerous Days. And I just felt at that moment that I wanted to bring people together mm. so the idea with dangerous days was to was to bring the east to the west mm. so so on the, we're basically talking about african americans with asians mm -hmm. from 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 asia and uh -huh. i wanted to make sure that um i combined that storyline uh, that we we see this energy of more togetherness than to separation and in the industry they basically state that you know this all this stuff was going through my head at that time right. they were basically they were basically telling us that you know as a as an actor black actor or black performer you cannot you cannot burst out and reach people right. into those into those realms because they said well you you can't sell you know your product can't sell so and my thing was why not being a performer or an actor and you and a writer, you should be able to write a product mm -hmm. and to be able to ship it anywhere in the world, like any other movie. Right. So, so I decided to write this this dangerous days where I combined um, the black community with the Asian community, but from a martial arts point of view. Okay. So it was how I started. It was basically it was about a, a brother and a sister team. Mm -hmm. But it was actually a father and a friend team because uh, I I got the uh, uh, the two businessmen who uh, were were partners. One was black and one was Asian, so they had an opportunity to trade, but they also had an opportunity to embrace each other mm -hmm. in friendship. Wow! So in order to do that, I brought. The two communities together. Wow. And now, understanding at that time, I wasn't thinking about the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But then I realized as I as I wrote the book and I started thinking about doing the movie, I realized, wow, this is a huge market. We're talking about close to four billion people in Asia. We're talking about a billion over a billion or more in Africa. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh North America. Wow. And if we reach out to those areas, yeah. that's really profitable when it comes to the box market. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I thought about combining those two from an economic standpoint, being able to bring those two communities together because all I need is uh, a million people in Asia to spend mm -hmm. a dime to go see the movie. But we we know they have four billion uh, billion people there, so mm -hmm. they, if I sell it in that in those neighborhoods, it would only cost a dime, 
I already made my money back for the movie. We're not even talking about Africa. They, they can spend five cents and I'll still make my money back. Yeah. So, so that was the idea was to bring the both communities together because they told us that we can't sell. And I believe I can sell anywhere. Right. So, right. so, so that was the process of actually writing this, 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 um, Dangerous Days was to be able to bring the, the boat communities together, but also tell a really good story. So isn't it true that that if the book is already written, then it's a much easier to uh, turn it into a movie? Like, like what is it, it? It's easier to write a script. Is that right? Well, I'll tell you what happened. The script was already written first. Ah. And then um, I got approached about doing the book. Oh. So I, I did the book off of the script. Oh. Yes. So I did it the other way. Right. <laughs> Where okay. most people get a book and they go, okay, yeah. I'm going to write a script. No, this right. I wrote the script was already written. Okay. And then then I got approached about doing the book and you know being getting it published. And we did it, we did it in a way that we did not add a lot of things that that's going to be in a movie because you're talking about a lot of special effects, right. a lot of fights, a lot of fight sequences, um, a lot of really a lot of visuals. So yeah. I couldn't, I cut, I couldn't bring that too much into the book. You have to see it. Right. But I can just, you know, I can just tell you what it is. Right. But seeing it is two, is two different things. So it's an so action-packed. It's an action pack. For, yes. Yes. Beyond the book, beyond entertainment, acting, directing, producing, all that, you also work in your community with young people. And that is huge, right? Yes. It's yes. huge. And people and these young people need that. And yours mm -hmm. is with youth offenders and um troubled youth, which is right. very important, right? Let's yes. talk about that and why yes. you chose the youth and how um, you're doing in that community. Actually, it chose me. Mm, okay. It chose me because in the neighborhood that I was living, um, I used to teach the kids around the neighborhood. I used to teach them martial arts. Right. And um, one day this, this mature lady came up to me. She goes, you work so good with the kids in the neighborhood. Have you ever thought about going into the jails? Have you ever thought about um, counseling young offenders? This, I go no, because I'm in the, I'm in the music and the movie business. Right. She goes. She and she kept bugging me, but I kept saying, "Well, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure." <laughs> Because you know, I, the kids, the kids love me in the neighborhood, so they can come right. and train for free, right? <laughs> so, so then um, I decided, oh, you know what? I'm gonna take a look. She goes, please come and take a look. Come on, and you don't have to do it all the time. You can do it part time. You can put in a day. You can put in two days, mm -hmm. and we will we will talk about this supplement of whatever. Right. And I said, okay. So I went down and I saw the environment and I saw the kids, yeah. and. Um, I started putting in one day a week, two days a week. And then before I know it, I was pulled in. I was sucked right in because I saw the pain in the kids and I realized that, okay, this situation should ground me because at the end of the day, in my world, it's like fantasy. Mm -hmm. The movie business is fantasy. Okay. The entertainment business is fantasy. This is reality. So when when I had an opportunity to sit um, and talk to the kids, I realized they have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was psychological yeah. because a lot of it, you know, they're in a neighborhood where they, they feel that they can't get out. You know, what was the most amazing thing from dealing with the kids? I realized these kids have never been to the lake. They live in a they live in a place surrounded by water and they have never been to the lake yeah. and that really touched my heart i was like well the lake is not too far from here it's only an hour well that's no sorry maybe 45 minutes 30 minutes you can drive to the lake <laughs> so, right. it was just so taken back but you know they come from a rough part of town 
Um, they were being influenced by other people who were telling them it's easy to sell the drugs, mm -hmm. you know, because what they did was they basically had these kids sell the drugs. They will, the kids will do some time and they will get up because of the stature of the young offenders. Yep. Right. Yep. So instead of, instead of them uh, at adults going and it was really spend some time, they would send the kids. Yeah. So now I had to counsel the kids and try to teach them, um, you know, you don't need them. You can you can do this. Go to school, get a few things. We can help you out. So I I got rounded into a whole lot of area about what it takes. You know, and yeah. I, I I had to study about alcohol syndrome, um, suicide prevention. Yeah. Wow. You know, I learned all these things that I would have never known if I didn't take that turn and understood that people can be. Uh, especially kids could be pulled in by substance. And sometimes it comes from the family. Yeah. Substance abuse might just come from the family. So, and I spent a lot of time in court mm -hmm. sitting with the kids, you know, talking to the judges, talking to the lawyers, counseling the mothers, counseling the dads, yeah. you know, and trying to pull them together. So somehow they can give some inspiration to some of these kids that their vision can open up. Because if you don't have a vision, you're dead. You got to have a vision in life. You got to see something. You got to want something. Right. Yeah. So, Sorry, so was... yeah. So that was, that was a part of my life. I, you know, I will never forget because it grounded me. Yeah. It, yeah. But not yeah. only that, I had, I had an opportunity after a while to, to even bring them on a movie set. And it's like, and I was like, Hey, you see that you can, you can be yeah. a grip. You can you can do clothes, you can do this, you can do that. And they go, wow, wow. I says you got to open up your perspective. Yeah. You can open up your mind and see yourself outside of your of of the community that you're in. I love that. So, so I got a I got a good opportunity to give back, and I'm I'm very thankful for going through that journey. Actually, that's amazing. Kids yeah. need that. That's it's just a matter of someone paying them enough attention and steering them in the right direction and educating them that it's more exactly than, it's more than just this right here you know exactly so, exactly yeah, that's amazing yeah. so mm -hmm. you've done you've done a lot you've accomplished a lot what do you feel is your biggest accomplishment thus far my biggest accomplishment this far god i've done so many things um I think my biggest accomplishment is just being able to teach, uh, just reach people, touch people, uh, give that opportunity of gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. Yes. That's 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 my latest tune, by the way. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Yeah. Because just being able to get up in the morning, mm -hmm. you gotta have gratitude. You gotta give praises to the most high. Mm -hmm. You have to, because you know, I think people right. believe just because they get up and everything is working out just the way it is, that's the way it is. No, we are spirit in a human flesh and we have to give gratitude every day. Some people can't walk. Some people can't see. Some people can't mm. hear. Mm. So if you have every function, everything working for you, mm. you got to have gratitude. Gotta have gratitude. So that is my biggest. I love it. That is my biggest thing for this year and forever, having gratitude. What are you, you know? most, yeah? What are you most proud of? Uh, I'm most proud of having just to be able to work in the field, yeah, and to be able, you know, sometimes you 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 have all these gifts and you take it for granted. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm proud that I have all these things that I can pass on to someone else. Each one, teach one. I could pass it on to the younger folks. Um, and it feels really good to be able to do that. Yeah. Because I think some people, they take their talents and they take it to the grave. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to be able to touch them and say, hey, you know, you can, yeah. you can play this guitar. You can play this guitar. This yeah. guitar is not that bad. You yeah. can, you sit down. I can teach you. Yeah. I can teach you the chords. You know, I yeah. can teach you what a, what a, what a, what a A minor is. Or I think B flat be, major. Yeah, I think we yeah. all should do that. We should all should yeah. be given what we have. Like, share it. We can't mm -hmm. take it with us. Like, we'll, it's, exactly. 
And why wouldn't we want our people to win or whoever, you know, just if, yeah. if I know, then why won't I share, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So they can yeah. be better people. You never know what you can bring out of people. Like, I love your yeah. concepts. I love it. Yeah. 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 I really try to stay in the, in that zone because I remember one thing that happened to me when when I was working on on the movie set. You know they have what they call um, a trailer after you break time. They have all this food, tons of food. Yeah. And yeah. I said to myself, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask the cook if I can take some of this food with me. So I started taking the food and I started going downtown and feeding the homeless. Oh. Right. And then one day. They they start the producer stopped me. Hey Dave, you don't do this anymore. And I go, why? They go, if you feed these people and they get poisoned, it's gonna come back on us. So you can't you can't be taking the food and going and feed the homeless. Mm. And I was kind of hurt. I was like, I was yeah. so upset because yeah. you know there was people there that was waiting for me. Like you know, they go, oh here comes Dave. You know he's got sandwiches. He's got this. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Who's so much you? wasted. I saw so much wasted food and stuff on the movie set, and I'm like, "What do you guys do with this?" Oh, we throw it in the garbage. What? <laughs> you throw it in the garbage? And there's people on the street who want who needs a sandwich, you know. <laughs> so um, um, I got into a lot. I got into a lot of conflict in my time because I, yeah, yeah, I did I did stuff the other way than than to actually follow up with the crowd. So I I went the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh man, life. Yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. What do you want your legacy to be when you're no longer here? What do you want people to remember you for? I want them to remember me as a person who opened up his heart, his doors, and his knowledge to anyone. I think that, you know, knowledge to me is so important because. I got a lot of knowledge and I also got a lot of knowledge for free. I didn't have to buy it. I didn't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. It just, it was just automatic. I just got it. And I the universe, the universe just brought it to me, you know? So, you know, some things you pay for, but you know, most of it, you know, my first, my first dance teacher, Len Henry, Len, Len Gibson, Len Gibson, he came in the thirties where, where he wasn't allowed to, to do, to dance ballet uh, on any stage. Right. And learning from him, when I first went to his studio, he said, I said, I got no money. He goes, okay, you got no money? That's not a problem. You just clean my studio for me. Right. So you can take the classes and you can sweep up after everybody's left. And I did that. Yeah. I never really paid for, for the dance classes. I cleaned up, cleaned up the washrooms, cleaned up the, the studio put everything in place mm -hmm. and he, he will never tell me don't come. Yeah. It's like, keep coming, keep coming. Actually, he's the first one that told me why are you hiding in the back of the room? You should be up front learning parables and, and all the different types of dance moves, but you hiding in the back. And I said, I says, what do you mean? He goes, I got it. You cannot see. Mm. And I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I was at the back follow watching everybody's feet. You right. know, like <laughs> oh wow. He goes, he, goes, he goes, listen, you go to the you go to the you go to the eye doctor and get your eyes tested. And he was so right. I got the glasses and everything, the whole world came alive. Everything is green, everything is yellow. And I did not know. This man told me that I could not see. That's crazy. That was it was yeah. meant for Isn't you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that That's amazing? amazing? That's amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, I appreciate you coming here. I, I like I've enjoyed this conversation. I can't wait to get it out to the people for them to hear. Um, especially the gratitude part. Like, yeah, so excited for your your work in the industry, but the gratitude part is very important. Yeah. We all yes. need to grasp a hold of that and just be thankful. So thank you for sharing that. Can you yes. go and tell the people where we can find your book, how they can follow you on all social media sites? Okay. I am on um I'm on every platform. <laughs> so they can find me on Facebook, they can find me on Instagram, they can find me any move, any music 
my music actually right now, Gratitude, is moved up from 271 to 71 yes. in, Spot in Spotify. So it's starting to move up. Yeah. Um, and my other tunes are already there. Mm -hmm. Now, these tunes are going into the film. That's the reason I decided to write the tunes. Right. So it, you can gather followers when the time the movie is shot. They can yeah. all follow them, follow the music right into the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. So Good, strategy. They can find Good strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And they can find me on every platform, any any platform, TikTok. I'm everywhere. And what is it under? So, okay. It's under it's under David Stevenson. Okay. Um, um, I think TikTok is under David Stephen 27. Um, the other ones are under David Stevenson. Um, that's it. You just got to punch in my name and you'll okay. find me. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. So one last thing before we go, what would you tell someone you being really seasoned in the business, in the industry? What is the best advice that you could give someone that wants to get in this industry? The best advice to anyone, do not give up on your dreams, number one. And the other advice into getting into this industry, you got to do it yourself. Mm. Meaning that, meaning that you got to dig, you got to search. If you feel uncomfortable with an agent or a manager, move along because the world is is big and it's huge and there's always somebody there that would appreciate will like you for you i remember doing doing uh certain things and it says they always said to me well you know you're not you might not be i forgot the word to use um organic i i don't know I, i'm not you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So uh, when they say things like that to you, do not stop. If they tell you that they don't need you on the set, don't get angry. Yeah. Remember, there's a there's a place and a part for everyone at a at a specific time. God has a plan for you. That's it. Um, but the best thing that they could do is they can they have to go and find an agent. You know, if they're going to go to the musicians union, they got to go to that. If they have to go to the actors union, they have to go through that. And these are the things you got to do in order to get in because the agent will set you up and get your jobs. I think they charge now maybe 10 percent. They take 10 percent of your of whatever right. you make. So okay. it's worth it just to get your feet in there. But when you get your feet in there. Don't talk, listen and observe. Because the way they set up the cameras, you can watch that. You can you can watch how they they do their dialogue. You can see um, if you're on a set, don't sit back and let everybody else talk. But you observe how things are working on the set. I like that. Ooh. Because it's going to help you in the future. It will. Especially when it comes to marks. You have Meaning good. that... Meaning when they set the marks down, they set marks down for you to, to walk into. Mm -hmm. You hit the mark and then your, your dialogue comes out, right? You got to hit the mark without seeing the mark. So though that's that's a very vital thing. Yeah. When, when, you, when you're on the set and they go, okay, uh, Dave, we want you to walk to the mark. You got to know what the mark is. The mark is an X underneath your foot. And you right. got you to gotta find that mark. And then you got to time the person that you that you deliver in dialogue to mm -hmm. and you got to have a flow it's it's almost like music you got to know when to deliver it and you got to know you, you can't deliver it too fast or you can't deliver it too slow but you got to be able to feel that other person you know because mm -hmm. sometimes if you do it too hard it looks like you're, you're trying to steal the yeah. scene <laughs> yeah. oh that's so interesting to me oh gosh i'm yeah. so interested okay that's interesting mm -hmm. well I thank you for sharing what you have shared. I thank you for being here. Um, we look forward to, you know, uh, seeing the the movie when it's when it comes all together. Um, uh -huh. and I will. I really. Ha I'm going to go out and try to find the book so I can get a copy of that. I really want to read the book. Wonderful. See that. Wonderful. So you guys go follow David on all social media sites. David Stevenson, um, and then let's support one another. Support his book. Support the movie. 
That's because yeah. we, when we support one another, we become a force to reckon. So um, it's a, it's enough room for us all. Let's just support one another. And and, yeah. and they can they can find me on IMDb. It's oh, called yeah. the, the Movie Internet Database. Yeah. So when they go in there, they will see all my credits, right? Yep. So they can go in there and they'll they'll find me. So that's IMDb. Yeah, IMDb. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. You guys heard it here. You heard it from Dave and go follow him. Go, go check him out. Um, but most of all, let's just support one another. Um, hit follow on his social media sites, go to Spotify, stream his music. Um, uh, and you guys, we're going to go for now. So remember, respect yourself, respect each other. God bless. And gratitude. Gratitude. Do not forget that. That's a big one. Gratitude. <laughs> Have gratitude. Yes, <laughs> I know I do. I do. So you guys, it, it, it pays off. It pays off. It sure does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys. Have a good night. I appreciate you.